Greetings from the Petersburg Church of Christ. We thank you for allowing us into your home today, and we encourage you to open your Bible and follow along with the message that's presented today. We would also encourage you to take notes and send us any questions or comments that you have concerning today's message to the address that will be provided at the end of the lesson. We invite you to join us any opportunity that you have. We meet on Sunday mornings at 10 o'clock and Sunday evenings at 6 p.m. We also have a midweek Bible study on Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m. We are located at 205 Russell Street, just off the south side of the Petersburg Square. Every Bible handy, this is going to be one of those sermons that's straight out of the book. In the 28th chapter of the book of Isaiah, beginning at verse 7, here in Old Testament times, a shadow, an illustration, a prophecy concerning future times to come, and what a tremendous thought it is. Beginning at verse 7 of Isaiah 28. But they also have erred through wine and through strong drink are out of the way. The priest and the prophet have erred through strong drink. They're swallowed up of wine. They are out of the way through strong drink. They err in vision. They stumble in judgment. For all tables are full of vomit and filthiness, so that there is no place clean. Whom shall he teach knowledge, and whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. For precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. For with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people. To whom he said, this is the rest wherewith ye may cause the weary to rest, and this is the refreshing, yet they would not hear. But the word of the Lord was unto them precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little, that they might go and fall backward and be broken and snared and taken. Wherefore, hear the word of the Lord, ye scornful men, that rule this people which is in Jerusalem, because ye have said we have made a covenant with death, and with hell are we at agreement. When the overflowing scourge shall pass through, it shall not come unto us. For we have made lies our refuge, and under falsehoods have we hid ourselves. Therefore thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I lay in Zion, for at the foundation a stone, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation, he that believeth shall not make haste. Judgment also will I lay to the lion, and righteousness to the plummet, and the hell shall sweep away the refuge of lies, and the water shall overflow the hiding place. Here in the words of the prophet Isaiah, he was talking to a people that were stumbling and falling and trying to get up and they're having problems. Did you notice who it was that was overtaken by the strong drink and the wine? The priest and the prophet. Now that's up. Think about it. They were stumbling, the religious people of the time that were supposed to know better were stumbling and falling flat. But in all of this Old Testament story here, did you notice how it ended? Therefore thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation, a stone, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation, he that believeth shall not make haste. 
even though the people of that time were shaking in their beings and they were stumbling and they were falling and they were trying to keep on going God through Isaiah raised a finger and he says there's coming a stone a solid rock that will not be shaken that it will not uh, lose its mooring that you can depend on it a tried stone a precious cornerstone a sure foundation and there is no other interpretation to this other than that Isaiah was pointing the finger to Jesus Christ the cornerstone of the church the solid bedrock foundation upon which people could build their lives and not stumble and fall all over the place that they could have something permanent and it's no uh, secret that this prophecy of Isaiah in chapter 28 of Isaiah is fulfilled. In fact, the Bible even gives the credit to Isaiah in the ninth chapter of the book of Romans. The prophecy of Isaiah was being fulfilled, and I wish we had the time. You know, time flies by so fast, and we don't even get started good, we have to stop. But in Romans chapter 9, the fulfillment of Isaiah, uh, in fact, uh, different verses in chapter 9, uh, talks about Isaiah also crieth concerning Israel, verse 27. And uh, a lot of other places, but notice in this text why Jesus came. And if you read it close and read on into chapter 11 a little bit too, you will find that Jesus Christ could be depended upon. But by the Jews letting Jesus become a stumbling block, that something good came out of that. And you know what it was that was good that came out of the Jews stumbling at Jesus? At verse 9 of Romans 11, And David saith, Let their table be made a snare, and a trap, and a stumbling block, and a recompense unto them. Let their eyes be darkened that they may not see, and bow down their back always. I say then, have they stumbled that they should not, that they should fall? God forbid. But rather through their fall, salvation is come unto the Gentiles. For to provoke them to jealousy. Now if the fall of them be the riches of the world, and the diminishing of them the riches of the Gentiles, how much more their fullness I speak to you Gentiles inasmuch as I am the apostle of the Gentiles I magnify mine office if by any means I may provoke to emulation them which are my flesh and might save some of them if you get into this and understand what's being said about Jesus the tried stone and that he became a stumbling block or a stumbling stone to the Jews and what came out of this stumbling at Jesus the Gentiles were able to be saved. That God had a place for the Gentiles. In the Old Testament, in the temple, there was a place for the Gentiles in the outer court. Read your Bible a little bit. Just clear as bell in there. There was an outer court of the Old Testament temple where the Gentiles could come. Where the proselytes to the Jewish religion could participate. And here in Romans chapter 9 and 11, it's quite interesting that the Jews stumbling at Jesus opened the door for the Gentile world. Who was the Apostle Paul? He's a Jew. Who did he preach to? The Gentile. He was the preacher to the Gentile. That they could know Christ and know what to do, we say. Rotten Bible 
on the idea of stumbling. Uh, 1 Peter chapter 2. Here, the Peter gets into it real good, just like Paul did. Beginning at verse 1 of 1 Peter 2. Wherefore laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speakings, as newborn babe desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. If so be ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious to whom coming as unto a living stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious, ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Unto you therefore which believe he is precious, but unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner. And a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense even to them which stumble at the word. Being disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed. This idea of stumbling is a biblical idea, Old Testament and New. I learned something the last week too. I thought I knew that's what the Bible said, but... I had to be sure. I had to be absolutely positive. I read the scripture reading this morning from Exodus 32. The story of Exodus 32 was that Moses had gone up on Mount Sinai. Been up there a long time. They didn't know what happened to Moses. In fact, said so. Evidently, weeks had gone by and Moses was still up on the mountain. Well, Moses was up there receiving the tablets of stone that contained the Ten Commandments, written on the front, written on the back. It was the engraving of God that put it, in, that put it together. Moses didn't do it, God did. And God told Moses to go down. He said to the children of Israel, or at play. And you know what they were doing? They had gotten old Aaron to take their gold rings and their gold jewelry, load it into the fire, and Aaron had the gall to tell Moses that they'd put that gold rings in the fire, and this gold calf came out. We dressed the story. It was Aaron that shaped the thing with a grieving too. He made it the way they wanted it. Well, when Moses came down off Mount Sinai with the Ten Commandments, some people say that he stumbled and fell. Now, he don't say no such a thing. He didn't stumble. Exodus 32, 19. Be sure. There it is. This is what it says. And it came to pass, as soon as he came nigh unto the camp, that he saw the calf and the dancing. And Moses' anger waxed hot. And he cast the tables out of his hands and break them beneath the mount. No, Moses didn't stumble and drop the tablets of stone. You know what the children of Israel were doing? They were breaking the very first commandment before they ever even got it. And God knew it. And God told Moses when he went down, he says, I'm going to destroy him off the face of the earth because I'm going to make a nation out of you, Moses. Moses was a good mediator, a good leader. He wasn't a stumbler. He was a builder, and he pleaded the case of children of Israel before God. So when he got down there and, and 
ferocious disgust toward the children of Israel and their breaking of the first commandment. He broke the commandments down and they broke to pieces. He got the golden calf, burned it in the fire, ground it to powder, put it on the water supply, made the children of Israel drink, and there was 3,000 children of Israel lost their lives over that deal. The way of God was in the heart and the mind of Moses. He knew what they were doing. He was not a stumbler. He had the cause of the Israelites' heart. He proved it. He even went so far in that chapter, Exodus 32, we read it not too long ago, where he told God, he says, if you won't forgive these people, he said, blot my name out of the book of life. God come back and Moses push strong. He said, Moses, those who do wrong are the ones I'll blot out of the book of life. Lessons to be learned. There's so much that needs to be said and time gets away from us. Uh, when we think about Moses, he was concerned about what was right. God had told him what was right. He stood tall and strong for what God wanted to be done for the children of Israel. Moses was a type of Christ. He offered hope. He loved the children of Israel. He wanted them to do what was right. They weren't going to get away with this breach of spiritual quality in breaking the Ten Commandments. I'd like to ask a very straightforward question right here, including myself. Are we stumbling in our lives? Or are we building in our lives? Are we building blocks or are we stumbling blocks? I don't think I'll miss this. Maybe modern things have changed a little bit, but I don't think so. You know what is characteristic of a little small child? Year old, maybe less, a little more. They got building blocks. They got alphabet on one side, got numbers on the other. Do you ever see a little child sit and build a little row of building blocks laced together one on one like you lay bricks or stack them up and see how high they can get them and see they'll fall? We know what building blocks are. Did you ever come home late at night when you had small children and step on one of them thunder blocks and fall flat in your face? Bad me. Brother R. North, that married Joyce and I years ago, he made a statement in Bible class one day. But he, he knew better than to come home late at night at his house and not have the lights on because he'd stumble over something and fall. We got your attention? Think about this. Am I a building block in the cause of Christ or am I a stumbling block? Am I stumbling up what ought to be done? Am I taking positions? Am I manifesting attitudes? Am I doing things in my life that are tripping up other people who could come to you? The lively stones of uh, the text there in Peter meant to go. They make up the spiritual house of God. Are those building blocks really building blocks? Do people that know us know what we do otherwise? What 
we're saying in public way, what we're doing out in the name of other things, and people are not being built and brought close to Christ, then being stumbled up, they're falling away. Why did Zacchaeus climb that signal tree? A couple reasons. Number one, he couldn't see Jesus. Little fella, little man, couldn't see him. So in order to see him, he had to climb a sycamore tree to get above the rest of the people so he could take a look at Jesus. And what did Jesus, when he came by and he saw Zacchaeus trying to see him up in that Christmas sycamore tree, what did Jesus say to Zacchaeus? He said, Zacchaeus, come down. I'm going to your house today. I'm going to your house today. But James Watkins did a sermon years ago, and I heard him preach it. I thought he was rich. He suggested that some members of the church are making the lost into Zacchaeus's so they can see so they can see Jesus over some of us. Because we stand in the way. We're blocking their view. You know what Jesus said would be better off for somebody who offended one of these little ones? He said you'd be better off if you had a millstone tied around your neck and thrown into the depths of the sea, if you hinder and you stumble up people who would come to Christ. That's serious. There ain't nothing easy about that. There's a lot in the Bible about building blocks or stumbling blocks. I don't want to stumble up people. I want to show them the truth. I want them to see the Savior. I want them to be a part of that which God said he would say. Oh, there's a lot of Bible here. Let me give you just a couple of interesting references and we'll close. Uh, look at Proverbs chapter 3, 21 uh, through 26. Oh, what a passage of Scripture. My son, let not them depart from thine eyes. Keep sound wisdom and discretion. Shall, so shall they be life unto thy soul and grace to thy neck. Then shalt thou walk in the way safely, and thy foot shall not stumble. When thou liest down, thou shalt not be afraid. Yea, yea thou shalt lie down, and thy sleep shall be sweet. Be not afraid of sudden fear, neither of the desolation of the wicked when it cometh. For the Lord shall be thy confidence, and shall keep thy foot from being taken. Chapter 4, verse 12, verse 19, Proverbs. When thou goest, thy steps shall not be straightened, and when thou runnest, thou shalt not stumble. Verse 19, the way of the wicked is as darkness. They know not at what they stumble. And then what a passage in a book written to people who are already Christian. First John chapter 2 and verse 10. He that loveth his brother abideth in the light, and there is none occasion of stumbling in him. He that loveth his brother abideth in the light, and in no occasion of stumbling in him. Preacher was visiting an insane asylum. And in noticing very few <coughs> personnel <coughs> that was taking care of six, seven, eight hundred <coughs> uh, insane people. 
commented on it. He said, he said, you don't have any more people here than what you have to take care of six, seven, eight hundred people. <clears throat> and uh, they said, no, I said, that's all we have. He said, well, well, what if these people unite against you? And they uh, go berserk and take care of it. They get, get, get a hold of you all and, ta and take advantage of you. You know what the reply was? He said, sirs, lunatics don't unite. Lunatics don't unite. Some of us in church need to pop our eyes wide open. Stop and think about it. We're not stumble up people. In our unity or disunity, we are not to falsely represent what Christ stands for. Jesus said, neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. That they all may be one, as our Father art in me and I in thee. If we're not careful, we can represent a strife-filled, torn apart, divided approach. And they ain't going to pay no attention. We need to stand firmly united upon Jesus Christ, upon his truth, why he came. Not stumbling and falling all over the place, but a solid bedrock foundation. Jesus Christ, the precious cornerstone, elect, tried, he can hold us where we ought to be. And we can present a united front and we can get something done that will amount to the souls of men and women, boys and girls. May the Lord help us to see that he wants building blocks. He don't want stumbling blocks. I like a lot of more Bible. In uh, the 14th chapter of the book of Romans, uh, it talks about uh, stumbling up, becoming a stumbling block to people who know us. A serious business. And if that's what we have done, if that's what we are doing, may God have mercy on our soul to get back in the building business, to get back in the being a lively stone in the spiritual house of God. You're not a Christian. The solid bedrock truth of Jesus Christ can make all the difference in the world. You can believe in him. You can do what he tells you to do. You can turn away from sin and repentance. You can confess him before men. You can be buried with Christ in the water grave of baptism. And upon the sure tried truth of Jesus, the sure tried stone, we be a Christian. Nothing more, nothing less. If your life has not been one of a building block, but a stumbling block, do you need to get your heart right? Well, do you need to ask him to forgive you? Do you need to have an about face and turn around? And get back in the building business. If we can help you in any way, would you come while we stand together? If you have and questions sing. or comments concerning today's lesson, you may send those to Petersburg Church of Christ, 205 Russell Street, Petersburg, Tennessee, 37144. Or you may email us at Petersburg Church of Christ at hotmail.com. You may also request a copy of today's lesson through the same method. Be sure to include today's date along with the station on which this program aired and the title of the lesson. We hope to see you again next week right here on this station at the same time.